Today's video was made possible with the help and support of my amazing patrons. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and happy Artsy Fartsy Friday. Today we are going to be reviewing the Arteza paint markers. Arteza graciously sent me these a few weeks ago for the purpose of review. As with all my other Arteza reviews, this is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I have a pretty good working relationship with Arteza. They send me products for free and I give them my honest opinions. They're really open to feedback and have actually been really receptive to questions that I have and have so graciously decided to send me these so I can try them out and let you guys know my thoughts. If you're interested in trying any of Arteza's products for yourself, I am an affiliate, which means I have a special link that you purchase something through and I get a small commission, but it does not affect the cost to you. So upon first glance, these markers instantly made me think of Posca pens. You guys have probably heard a lot about Posca pens. These kind of gave me that same look and feel, but I wanted to review them and compare them to the Posca pens that I have just just so that we can actually figure out what some of the similarities are and what some of the differences are as well. So I have in front of me the pack of 20 paint markers. Now there are only 18 colors in here and that is because you get two duplicate colors. You get an extra silver and an extra gold. I think this is pretty thoughtful. I think Arteza was trying to anticipate which colors people might be most drawn to. For me personally, I think I would have benefited more from having an extra black and an extra white white paint pen but these will definitely be used and it is thoughtful that they give you extras. So looking at the 18 colors here you do get a pretty decent variety. Something you guys might be looking for is something a little bit lighter. Uh, you really don't have a lot of lighter tones in this set. You do have a very neon yellow which is a super cool color to play around with and surprisingly really the only neon in this set. This pink is pretty bright, but really it does not hold a candle to this literally fluorescent yellow. You get a white and a black, which is great. You get two browns, both of which are pretty dark. I will show you the swatches here in a moment. Um, and then you have two blues, two purples, and three greens. And again, these two greens right here almost indistinguishable just based on the cap alone. I'd imagine that that would get pretty tricky if you're using these two markers frequently. You might accidentally grab for the wrong one, but one is a little bit more yellow based and the other is just a little bit more blue. So it's very subtle, um, but there is a difference between those two. Just some more information about the markers themselves. They do claim to be oil-based, permanent, quick drying, and non-toxic. So I think these will be very user-friendly for all ages and would work on a variety of different surfaces. So I did try these out in my sketchbook and I went ahead and swatched them. I'll go ahead and show you the swatches now. So this is my initial swatch card slash experiment page in my sketchbook. If we were to just focus on this top part of the page, here. You can see I have all 18 colors swatched out. I didn't feel it was necessary to swatch the two metallic markers twice. Um, the paint pens on this paper have a pretty matte finish, but you will note once you layer them up, I'll show you in a moment, they do have more of a paint-like texture. So for reference, this is mixed media paper, and I did feel like the, the paint in these markers really seeped through and absorbed rather quickly, which definitely speaks to that quick drying component that they were talking about um, but unlike a lot of paints there's not a whole lot left that really sits on top of the page um, it really absorbs through and you can start to see here with some of the blues and the greens there is not a significant difference between a lot of the colors namely a155 and A159. These look very different in the set. These are actually these two blue markers here. Um, A155 is here and A159 is here, or at least I'm pretty sure because you don't have the color name on the marker itself, which is a bit frustrating, especially because these end up looking so similar on the page. Um, it would be nice to be absolutely sure about which marker was which color. And it's kind of a similar story here with the greens. You can see A106 and A146 look very different 
on the marker caps, but end up looking pretty similar when they're swatched out. And these two green markers that I said look very similar on the caps do look probably even more different than these two grains up here. So that can be a bit confusing. And again, I would just greatly appreciate having the color name on the pen itself. I might go in and write those in myself just so that I have a quick and easy way to distinguish between the two colors. Because to be honest, if I'm using these in a less than ideal light setting, I'm going to mix these up very, very easily. And I foresee that being a little bit frustrating, especially if I'm really trying to to avoid warm colors in a painting or cool colors in a painting. It could just really kind of throw everything off. So looking a little bit into the performance here, I was interested to see how these colors layer and how they blend and just simply how they react to each other. So you can see here, I tried to do some blending. I was actually pretty satisfied with that. I was able to kind of layer the color up over itself and it did mix pretty well. Obviously there are streaks, but that is sort of the nature of this art supply itself. So I was not expecting it to be a perfect blend but I was able to blend about four or five different colors here I think once I added the white that was technically my fifth color I was a little underwhelmed at how I wasn't able to layer lighter colors over darker colors I think with my experience with Posca pens thus far is that you can layer lights over darks pretty easily that wasn't necessarily the case with this and again I will say that was my experience on this paper that may not be true for all surfaces I was pretty satisfied with the ability to get this rose here rendered out pretty nicely after kind of going over things a few times. I was happy with the highlights I achieved and I really like the way that this leaf came out. Um, in this example, the lighter marker did layer pretty nicely over the darker marker, but in this example where I tried to layer this pink over this purple, it was really underwhelming. And I did not want to note here that the blue marker um, smudged when I went over it with the yellow marker, which was something else that I wasn't super happy about, especially because this is one of the only lighter colors in the paint pack. So I feel like I'm going to be using it quite often. And the fact that it could smudge or mix with some of those darker colors was not super promising. And I think for me, the main difference that I kind of noticed right away was that I feel like the Posca markers are slightly more opaque than the Arteza markers. This isn't necessarily a pro or a con. It's going to just depend a lot on how you work with paint pens. And it's really just about getting a feel for the marker itself. I think if you're used to Posca pens, these will be pretty familiar to you, but you, there might be a little bit of a learning curve. So getting into the marker itself, I wanted to break down just the instructions for what you need to do when you get these markers because they come individually wrapped in this packaging, which might seem a little extra but I think the nature of these pens is that they're a little bit prone to exploding in transport so I think Arteza was trying to prevent multiple markers being damaged if one of them were to explode and I did not have any of my markers explode they all transported to me perfectly fine individually wrapped and my little life hack for you guys to unwrap these very quickly is just to twist the plastic packaging it will give pretty easily and you can just slide it off from there I would highly recommend that over something like using your teeth or even a sharp object to uh, remove the packaging with just because it's a round surface it's hard to get a little bit of a grip and I don't want you guys to cut yourselves. So I found that twist and then pull method to be really helpful and that way you get to avoid using your teeth. So that is how I removed all of the plastic packaging. And then once I removed all of the plastic packaging, I removed the cap. And when you first get these paint markers, the nib will not be pre-saturated, meaning your pen will not be ready to use right out of the packaging. Arteza does break down the steps that you need to do to prime your pens, not only on the packaging, but also on the individual paint pens, which I guess is nice uh, because I have mentioned before I'm not a big fan of Arteza's plastic packaging. It feels very flimsy um, and it can be a little bit stubborn to like maneuver around your desk. So I appreciate that they included the instructions on the paint pen itself. And basically there's four simple steps here. To prep your paint pen, you want to shake it, pump it, push it, and then write. When you shake your Arteza paint pen, you will hear a little ball kind of being knocked around in there. That is to keep the paint mixed and keep it nice and liquid. 
and my recommendation was to shake this for about five seconds before you move on to step two which is pump it and I just like the illustration kept the pen vertical pumped it down three times very straightforward and simple and then when it came to pushing the pen at step three I held it down on my paper I didn't kind of pump it up and down several times I kind of held it down for five seconds and then lifted up again to see if that paint was starting to travel down the nib and if it wasn't doing that yet then I held it down for five more seconds and checked again and I did that until the paint pen was saturated so that is how I did it and then after that it was ready to write and they were pretty much good to go from there it takes a little bit of time but actually in my experience it was quicker to prep these paint pens compared to other paint pens that I've tried so they do take a little bit of time and prep work before you are ready to use them but really in the grand scheme of things not so bad now in comparing them to an art supply that we probably have all heard of at this point the Posca pen I unfortunately cannot give a lot of specific information on the Posca pen because all of mine is in another language I will try and include more details on the Posca pens down below for those of you who are interested or I'm sure many of you kind Kind commenters will inform me in the comments down below some of the details about Posca markers so feel free to do that but when you compare the markers just in size and shape the Posca pens that I have are definitely a little bit fatter I do think they come in a size closer to the Arteza um, but in this case the Posca barrel is a little bit shorter and a little bit wider although it is fairly close the Posca pen is just slightly wider than the Arteza pen the Posca pen is also a plastic barrel whereas the Arteza one is kind of an aluminum metal one and both of them have a little notch to prevent the pen from rolling on your desk which is thoughtful and does seem to work pretty well so good for them for thinking of those of you working on an inclined desk the biggest difference that I can speak to between the Arteza pens and the Posca pens is actually the scent in just my short time swatching the Arteza pens I think it's very much worth noting that there was a pretty strong odor from the Arteza pens and the reason I want to say that is because I am not one to get a headache too quickly from working with strongly scented art supplies but I did get a headache after swatching the Arteza pens so all that really means is that you want to use these pens in a well ventilated area and that also tells me that the paint inside of the Posca pens is probably a different base than the paint in the Arteza pens the Arteza says that it's oil based but I don't really know much more about it besides that and I'm not exactly sure what the Posca pens are filled with it might be acrylic it might be gouache I feel like I've heard both so I'm not 100% sure on that but in my experience the Posca pens have been virtually odorless and the Arteza pens are definitely not now that you kind of have a rundown about the Arteza pens let's just go ahead and try them out I did get a little bit of a sense for what it was like to work with them by just doing Doing this little flower here but I want to do a full on painting because I've already had my experience swatching the paint pens out on this mixed media paper and have honestly been a little bit underwhelmed with how they layer and absorb I thought we could try something a little bit different and I remembered that I have these little canvases around and I haven't had anything to use them for so I thought it might be fun to do a canvas illustration using the Arteza paint pens and I think I'm going to do a quick layer of gesso on this before we go ahead and do that so there is going to be uh, a little bit of a cut while we jump into the time lapse portion of this but I will be doing some thumbnailing before I figure out exactly what I want to do so I will see you guys in the time lapse. For those of you who are interested, I use the Pro Art brand Premium Gesso Canvas Primer. I actually purchased this on Amazon, so I will just go ahead and link it down below for you guys so you can check it out if you're interested in the gesso that I used.
then here we have my finished painting using the Arteza paint pens. These were really fun to try out. Again, I feel like the biggest uh, critique that I have and the biggest word of advice I have if you are interested in using these markers is to use them in a well ventilated area because they are um, very potent. They smell very strong, similar to like that Sharpie smell. I imagine it's not good for your brain cells if you are inhaling it for long periods of time. Um, so just keep that in mind when you are working with these paint pens. I worked on this painting in several different parts over the past couple of days and I really like it. I feel like my concept design came together. You do get a lot of that kind of textured look. You can see if I kind of tilt this painting it's got kind of a sheen to it so um, with the addition of the gesso on this canvas the paint markers dried very glossy and kind of even tacky even after it's been left to sit to, to dry for long periods of time um, the paint will transfer onto skin while it is still wet which is to be expected it does dry relatively quickly which like the packaging indicates, I did experience that to be true, um, but I'm a very impatient artist, so I typically get paint and other art supplies all over my body when I am creating anyway, so that was not necessarily a critique on the product. I feel like that's more of a me thing. Um, they were a little bit streakier than I was expecting. I think when I've worked with Posca pens in the past, They've been really smooth. There might be like one or two colors that I have to do two layers, but I kind of had to do two layers as just a baseline with these paint pens. I found myself going in for three, even four layers in some parts, especially to kind of build up the intensity of the white. Um, the worst culprit for me was this green marker. Uh, this, this one right here, the more kind of blue toned one, this one, um, which I believe to be a a146. This was very streaky. I didn't have that experience when I was swatching it on the mixed media paper, but on the canvas, it was very streaky. So, um, I really had to kind of layer that one on. I did notice that once I colored over, uh, the lighter green, it layered a lot better. So just kind of, um, information for you to take in and use as you will uh, directly on the canvas it was very streaky layered on top of a layer of dried paint marker it performed a lot better um, another tip that I could give you is that when I was painting her kind of swimsuit top here I tried my best to keep all of the paint strokes going in one direction uh, and it was very streaky and the streaks it was very noticeable so when I went in for a second layer I uh, used an alternate direction an alternate stroke and that gave me a really nice even coverage uh, where the texture kind of came into play to really help me out was in the hair and in the sky. So here is where I really didn't mind those occasional paint strokes because they provided a lot of texture. Even though for the most part this painting has a lot of very flat solid colors, I really appreciated that texture in these certain areas of the piece because it just broke it up visually and gave it a little bit more interest. You can see I did go around the perimeter of the painting and I colored that in black just to give it a sort of faux frame look so that it looks really finished and even if you were to hang it up and display it just like this, um, it would look really nice. I do intend to spray this with a sort of fixative just so that it's um, preserved really nicely. I'm not exactly sure how these markers will hold up over time, if they're light fast um, or archival in any way. I suspect that they're probably not so if you were to display this in sunlight it would probably fade over time so I'm gonna spray it with a fixative just to preserve it as best I can but I had a really fun experience using these I'm glad I experimented with the canvas because I feel like it got me out of my element a little bit and I was much more open to trying some new techniques like I did in the sky um, another thing I will mention is that these markers blended pretty well I think 
when I went in with the sky, I wasn't necessarily working quickly. When I layered the orange, it was on top of a completely dry layer of yellow. And when I went over the orange with the yellow, it was mostly dry at that point, but it still blended really nicely. I could see this being a pro and a con for using these markers. The pro is that you can blend the colors pretty easily. The con is that if you were trying to layer colors and not have them blend into each other, you're likely going to get some smudging and some mixing of those colors. So it really just kind of depends on the look that you're going for, whether that's going to be a pro or a con. Lastly, I will note that the white paint pen really did kind of pick up a lot of other colors around the canvas and so it was hard to keep it pure white. I even noticed it sometimes picking up the color of the Colerase pencil, um, which is just a very light blue. I kind of just went in with a very light sketch layer for this, but it was still enough that the white paint pen picked it up and it altered the color just slightly. So I kind of had my scratch piece of paper off to the side to clean the nib every so often. So you might have to do the same as well. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with my experience. I would recommend the Arteza paint pens if you want to try them out. Maybe you've been interested in trying Posca pens, but you're not sure where to start. I feel like although these perform a little bit differently, they are more or less along the same lines with how you use them and the kind of results that you get. So I feel like if you like Posca pens, you will like these. And if you want to try Posca pens, these wouldn't necessarily be all that different. So if you tried these out first, instead of investing in Posca pens right away, I think these would kind of give you a feel for whether or not Posca pens would be a good next step. So even though these weren't necessarily a dupe or a direct comparison to Posca pens, I still wanted to include them for this review uh, just so that you can see kind of if they're gonna be along those same lines or not. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna see more videos on my channel. I do lots of art supply reviews and time lapses and tutorials and just art chat videos in general. So if that's your thing, then go ahead and subscribe so that we can hang out more and become internet friends. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the internet. Bye.